Here's another video I thought I'd show. Uh, changing tires for my 2010 Chevy Colorado, taking the Goodyear HPs off. They have about four to five thirty seconds left, and I like to take them off a little early. Uh, I think uh, tires are a big safety issue because it's the only thing that contacts the road. So I thought I'd show you how I change tires. I have a used Coates 4050 uh, that I bought locally here. It was missing a piece, which I was able to get it pretty cheap. I don't have a whole lot of money in it. So I thought I would uh, take and show you uh, how I change tires. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll speed up the video a little bit because this might be time consuming because on a Coates 4050, uh, it's just that you can do 17s. You got to be real close with it, but this will give you an idea. Maybe you'll want to buy your own tire machine you could fire use, uh, or it's, most of the time it's better just to get somebody to do it. And uh, I'll go through the whole process and how I do it. But I'm going to start off by taking the air out of the tire and then uh, breaking the tire down. So let's get started. Okay, that was uh, removing the tire as you can see. It's not exactly easy, but this machine does help. And like I said, this, <laughs> this machine wasn't really made for 17 inch tires. It should actually be done with a rim clamp, but I'm able to do it and it saves me a lot of money. So, we all know a lot of these newer vehicles, especially being a 2010 and there's some even probably before that that have uh, tire pressure monitors. So those who don't know, right there it is. And a real easiest way to uh, change that is by removing the tire. And in my case here, you need a 13 millimeter socket, some are different, to remove that. And with me changing tires, I've had these tires on these rims for about seven years or so now. And I just felt it was time, but that's what the tire pressure monitor looks like. And I feel that it's just better to take and replace them now instead of being a problem later. And just like in uh, removing the old one, this one comes with a small gray cap that I don't use. I put decorative caps on my on my uh, valve stems. But that's what you get in the kit. Look around, shop around. Sometimes you can find a deal. I would advise, because I've ran into this already, do not buy them off eBay.
Now I already did install that, but one thing I like to do is to make sure that the wheel is really clean. And I actually thought it was cleaner than what it is, so we're going to take, I'll show you how to do that. So basically here we're going to take, uh, in my case here, I got a Dewalt drill with a wire brush on it. And I'm uh, going to take the wire brush and go through and uh, brush that off and make it clean. see we got that clean We're ready to mount the tire and it has a nice clean spot to uh, seal completely so you don't have to worry about the bead leaking on the tire so in order to protect as you can notice protect the wheel in this case I use just an old rag for when I tighten the wheel down And that keeps it from beating up the finish on my wheel. Now, thing I uh, learned here from doing tires for a couple of years. One, first of all, I guess I'll share that uh, if I can get it in the camera right. I decided to go with the get some kind of a look there. The Uniroyal Tiger Paw Touring AS. Seem to have good rating. I like the tread pattern. It's not real aggressive. Good highway tire. This truck doesn't really see any off-road. Uh, the only thing I'll tell out, out there to Uniroyal is I wish they were made in the United States in, instead of, uh, I think it's, hold on one second. We'll take a second here and report this, that it's made in, I believe, Korea. I could be wrong on that. Uh, oh no, it's made in Thailand. So, anyway, it is what it is. So, what you want to do, get this here lined up a little better. You got to lube the bead up really good. And I'll share something here before I put the tire on. That... There's marks here on the back of the tire. That means when you see the yellow circle like that, it means for the, the valve stem on the wheel. And then the red point, this red mark is actually the heaviest point of the tire. So we're going to line up the yellow mark on the tire with the valve stem. But I, I'll mount it on the inside so you don't see it. So here we go.
yellow mark is lined up perfectly. A little bit up real good again. And hopefully it's not in the way of the machine. A locking uh, air chuck is a good thing. This one does leak a little. You put it in like that. Grip up. I like to run 35 pounds of air pressure in my tires and I have a gauge on the machine down here right there it's hopefully you can see it move Now we have our nice decorative cap. So now for a, a primitive use of, uh, you know, when you balance your tires, you want them nice and balanced so they don't shake when you're going down a road. So this is my air bubble balancer that my dad has had for probably about, let's just say a really long time. And the only thing he did do it was upgrade the, a, it to a new bubble in here. And I'll show you how easy it is to work. Now, you gotta use a little bit of your own knowledge and stuff to guess the size of weight to use to line up the bubble. But it's real easy, watch this. That's it. Stick it on there. And if you look closely, we don't need any weights. Because that thing is about right dead center. So to me, that's a good tire along with good wheels. So basically, this is it. Uh, take it off the tire, the tire balancer. Put our center cap back on. Pull the sticker off the tire. And this is ready to go. Now what I like to do, I like to let my tires stand for a few days before I put them on to make sure I don't have to worry about any leaks. So, a little bit of a long video. I think very informative, so you know what it's like. When you have to go get tires, put on your vehicle. So, this 
This is GMAC. Like, subscribe, and uh, remember, keep on wrenching.